This week, we're diving deep into intermittent fasting and bodybuilding with 21 times world champion bodybuilder, Sarah Taylor. If you're new to this channel, I'm Neil Fellows. and In this series, we're exploring health and wellness under the premise that some illnesses and diseases may be avoidable if we took proactive steps to prevent them. And each week I interview wellness experts and we dive deep into one aspect of your health with the aim of giving you greater freedom to find what works for you as a unique individual. If you want to explore your health and wellness, subscribe and hit the bell to get notified about all of our latest uploads as soon as they happen. And if this channel can help your friends and family, please also share it with them too. This week, my guest is 21 times female world champion bodybuilder, Sarah Taylor. And we're going to be exploring intermittent fasting because intermittent fasting is one of the um, more popular diets that are out there right now, especially when it comes to reducing weight. So today we want to explore intermittent fasting though from the angle of bodybuilding. And to find out if intermittent fasting is helpful when building muscle, I'm going to be talking to Sarah Taylor. Hi, Sarah. Thanks for, for joining me. Sarah, um, can you tell us what is intermittent fasting and how does it work? OK, um, inter intermittent fasting, just like any other kind of diet, it fundamentally achieves weight loss through taking in less, I guess, food energy than you would burn through your, your normal activity. And it achieves this goal by severely limiting your calories during certain days of the week or even during specified hours during the day. And the theory is that intermittent fasting will help decrease the, your appetite by slowing the body's metabolism. And then because you're not taking in glucose through sort of, um, you know, sort of carbohydrates and your, your body's actually burnt through its sugar reserves, then the theory is that it then taps into your fat reserves and this is how that it, it encourages the body to release fat and how you can you can get this additional um, weight loss. Okay, it's interesting. So it's like it, it's stopping eating for long enough actually to, to actually to, to allow your body to burn off the sugar and then start to eat into the, the fat reserve and that's how we would lose weight potentially. So Sarah, tell us a little bit about the, the, the pros and cons of intermittent fasting and bodybuilding. Okay, well, look, there's, there's actually quite a number of uh, proposed, you know, proposed benefits of intermittent fasting. Anti-aging being one of them. Um, there's this, this concept called autophagy, which kicks in probably, it, it usually kicks in about 24 hours. So if you did a 24 hour fast, um, you've got this, this notion, of autophagy, which is, and phages are these little like, uh, elements, I guess, that run around your body cleaning up waste products. So actually uh, another version of intermittent fasting you can do is uh, do a 24 hour fast one day a week. That's, a, that's actually another intermittent fast and that can actually have some incredible anti-aging uh, health benefits. Increasing growth hormone is another benefit of intermittent fasting, which can, the release of uh, human growth hormone helps our body uh, build muscle and burn fat and um, it's it's healing as well so if you've got sort of tendon damage and stuff it could be quite healing for that okay. um, it can lower insulin um, studies have sort of showed that it, various intermittent fasting forms can lower insulin by about 20 to 30 percent so people who struggle with insulin resistance such as obese people or even women with um, PCOS could potentially benefit from intermittent fasting. Of course, it's used for weight loss, um, promoting cellular repair, it's anti-inflammatory, and it, it has been suggested that it could actually help with cancer prevention as well. Now, having said that, um, some of the cons, um, as I said, with the more extreme ones, could lead to sort of more disordered kind of thinking around eating particularly in the sort of binging sort of you might get sort of start falling into this binging modality if you've only got a four hour window to get all of your food in it could lead to sort of binge issues and then that can lead to digestion issues as well 
if you're sort of overloading your system with a huge amount of food in a very short space of time, you can get digestion issues. And often a lot of people, when they, they think that they've only got a four hour window to eat, they'll actually overeat in that window anyway. So they won't get the weight loss because they're, they're actually still yeah. overeating. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, this is the thing. It doesn't matter if you're only eating for four hours, you can still eat too many calories and actually gain weight. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, if you're on a and if you're on on an extreme intermittent fast, then you there's there's the whole social aspect of eating that you wouldn't you wouldn't be able to um, sustain. I mean, if you if your your four hour window is in the morning and then you you're going out with your friends at night, you know how are you going to deal with that? So it's not particularly sociable. And yeah. then there are actually some um, potentially there's some long term health consequences, especially for women. Um, it can really upset hormonal balance and it really is not recommended particularly if you're pregnant i mean now if you're bodybuilding you probably wouldn't be um doing this anyway yeah particularly if you're pregnant but it's it's really not not so safe long term for women because it can have hormonal um issues and actually potentially cause ovarian dysfunction which could lead into something like sort of pcos so the the you know, yes, there's some, there's some definite benefits, but you do also have to weigh it up with some of the sort of less, um, less ideal after effects. Um, so in the context of, um, of bodybuilding, which we know that you're, uh, you're a champion at, um, tell us how, does it, how, how would intermittent fasting work with that? Well, it would work just like any other intermittent fast. I mean, as I said before, intermittent fasting um, relies on the premise of restricting your calories between you know, certain hours of the day or even certain days of the week. So for example, you might, you might choose what's, what's called a 16-8 split, which means you have an, an eight hour window during which you can eat and then you fast for 16 hours. Another common split might be a 14-10. It's the same thing. So you, you, you have your start time and your end time during which you're allowed to eat. And then for the rest of that, that time, you're not allowed to eat. Now for bodybuilding, you would probably want to go with one of these more gentle splits, such as a 14 hour 10, because the best time to eat for, with bodybuilding is around your workout. So either before your workout and after your workout. So for example, one of the more extreme levels of intermittent fasting where you, you fast for 20 hours of the day and then eat for, uh, for only four hours of the day, that wouldn't particularly work, that wouldn't work particularly well in a bodybuilding um, instance because it means if, you've, if you're timing your food around your workout before and after, it means you've also got to squeeze a workout in that four hours, which leaves you a very, very limited time to eat. And then this, this can, can actually trigger more you know, disordered forms of eating, such as binge eating. See, if you've only got four hours to get your food in, and then an hour and a half of that is taken up with a workout, you're gonna to have to cram in all of your, your calories either side of that workout it's going to lead to a much more sort of binge eating style of eating. So it's not particularly very good. And that's why if you do do intermittent fasting, even if you're not bodybuilding, you'd probably want to go with one of the more gentle styles, such as the 16-8 the or the 14-10. Okay. So um, from um, the, the, the you, you've come, just so that I understand, um, if I was sort of new to um, intermittent fasting, are yep. you suggesting I would go, probably go for the fourteen ten? Yes, absolutely. I mean, if you yeah. think about it, most of us do a, a, a form of intermittent fasting every day. You yeah. know, once we've finished our dinner and then we go to bed and sleep for eight hours, if you if you're lucky enough to get eight hours of sleep, you might get up and then go straight to work and then have breakfast. So you might actually not eat for ten hours. 10 or 12 hours anyway. So you're already automatically kind of doing a bit of an intermittent fasting, but that's not a long enough fast to, be, for, to allow your body to switch into the, um, using your, your, your fat reserves um, for fuel. Um, but yes, one of the more gentle forms and a, a good beginner split would be this having this 10 hour during which you can eat 
and then the 14 hours during which you fast. And then as you get more accomplished with it, you might want to reduce the eating hour window to, to eight hours. So you're fasting for 16 hours. And then if you really did want to sort of crank it up, you could again um, reduce the eating window to six hours. Um, and then you've got an 18 hour fast. So, th so you can actually get, you can actually get cr progressions, but as a starting, starting split, I would suggest, you know, you, you have this 10 hour window where you eat and fast for 14 hours. If somebody, um, just as you're talking there, just one of the, the things that I've, I've found with, um, sometimes, um, when I, I've exercised or in the middle of an exercise, body starts to shake a little bit and I've, relate that probably to the fact that maybe i didn't eat enough to take in enough calories or energy before i uh, i started working out um is that do you think that's what what's going on yeah look it, it absolutely could be what's going on and when you first start you, your body's not going to be used to burning fat for fuel and this is, this is very common when people also um, start doing the ketogenic diet as well. It's what's known as a keto flu. Because their body's adapting to using fat for fuel rather than glucose for fuel, it's, and fat takes a, it's a lot harder for your body to break down. Your, your body will kind of get to this point where it's, it's run out of sugar. The fat burning hasn't quite kicked in. So you'll just get this kind of real lack of energy. And it, you know, common symptoms are just like a flu. You could be a bit achy. You could sort of feel like you've got this cold coming on. You could have a, be a bit headachy. And absolutely, you can get a bit shaky as well, just while your body's, tr you know, struggling to get this fat, you know, the it's energy from the fat burning because it's, it's a much less efficient um, way of getting energy than glucose. Cool. So to everyone watching this video, if you're enjoying the video, please do let us know hit the like button and in the comments below just um, tell us how uh, the, the content is impacting you what your thoughts and feelings are regarding what we're talking about here so i, I think that um you know, we're talking about fasting um in the the context of, of bodybuilding but fasting and bodybuilding they're just ways that um we can just really be exploring life and understanding more about ourselves what are your thoughts on that <laughs> I've never really thought of bodybuilding as a way of exploring life or yourself, so I'm not really quite sure how to answer that, I'm afraid. <laughs> my, my thinking is that, you know, I, I do a lot of um, running and also yep. you know, the, the pick up weights as well. And, I, you know, you, you find that sometimes in those moments where um, your brain says, this is hard. I don't want to do another rep or this is hard running at this level. I, I don't yeah. want to do, I mean, you must have to get to where you've got to your brain at some point must have given you the same um, signals. How did you get through that? I mean, cause in, in exploring that we do learn something about ourselves. Absolutely. Yes. You're absolutely right. I mean, to get where I've got to in bodybuilding, you obviously have to have a tremendous amount of discipline and it's, it's not it's not easy obviously you know it, it's probably one of the hardest sports in the world because you've got to lift heavy heavy weights whilst you're on minimal calories as well to lose all the fat so it's, it's it's incredibly difficult so a high level of discipline is required you have to really really want to, to do it um and that motivation can only come from within you have to love it yeah otherwise you wouldn't do it um there's definitely <laughs> there's definitely been times when i I've got to the gym and I just haven't wanted to do it. And there's been tears and meltdowns and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, I, I've got through that by looking at the bigger picture of why I'm doing it. It all comes down to your why and the purpose. Um, now, when I went through my transfer transformation, the, my purpose was because I needed, you know, if I realized that if I didn't have my health, I had nothing. And with, there's another element to the bodybuilding. I got into the bodybuilding completely by accident and fell in love with it. Um, but as it turns out, there's been an additional benefit for it because particularly women over 40, our, our, our bone density decreases by about 1% a year over, over the age of 40. Now, in, osteoporosis is incredibly um, common in women. And it, it, in my family, it runs down the female line of my family. So I've been very, very conscious of, building up my bone density 
um, so that I don't suffer osteoporosis. And weightlifting is absolutely the best exercise you could do for that. And it's not just for women as well. It applies to guys. Guys get osteoporosis as well. And doing some form of resistance training at least three times a week is absolutely the best way uh, to prevent osteoporosis. And a lot of these, these typical aging diseases and you know, in addition to bone density loss, you also lose muscle at approximately sort of, you know, 1% um, of, you know, every year after about 40. And that applies to guys as well. Yeah. So resistance training has additional health benefits for me. And that's, that's been a very big form of my why that's got me through those times when it's, it's just been a battle. Yeah, that's really interesting, and thank you. And I'm glad we we uh, we kind of answered that question because it's, <laughs> it's because what's come out of it is really for you. You really have to get to understand why you were doing it to get you through those moments. Um, and I think that's that's kind of like so important. I mean, what we're talking about that's here, right. if it would um, help anyone who's watching, if you, if you yeah. know your friends and family, please do share the, uh, the video uh, with them. Um, because um, you know someone you know who's you know maybe trying to lose weight or suffering with osteoporosis, um, just what Sarah said here already um, could be really helpful to uh, to them. Sarah, talk about intermittent fasting and, and bodybuilding. I like to ask everybody that I interview um, to leave us with a challenge. Um, what would your challenge to me and also our community? What would, what would that be? All right, I actually, I actually have three. Okay. All right. Two, two of them are diet related and one of them is exercise related. Okay. Okay. So the first one is to drink zero calorie beverages for a week. And tell us what you mean by that. Okay. I'm glad you asked that. It <laughs> sounds very simple on the surface, but if you think about it, that means no soft drinks. Although, although I, there is a caveat, zero sugar soft drinks you can have. In terms of tea and coffee, it means black tea or coffee. Yeah. Okay. Herbal teas are great. Water obviously is great. No fruit juices and obviously no alcohol. Oh, that's a big one. That's the that's big, big one. one. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so that's challenge number one, zero okay. calorie beverages. So to recap, no fruit juice, no, um, I guess, full fat soft drinks and no alcohol. Black tea and coffee are okay, herbal teas are okay, and obviously water is okay. Okay. All right. The second one, one. Yeah. challenge number one. Challenge number two is only eating home-cooked meals for a whole week. Okay. So that means no takeouts. No takeouts. No going out no dinners and uh, anything nope. like that either. Nope. Good old home cooked, home, old fashioned. Good old home cooked. And here's the thing: we've been in lockdown now for six or eight weeks, so you're probably all experts at it by now. Or at least you should be. And <laughs> if you're not, and if you're not, actually, here's a great opportunity to practice because now that we're starting to come out of lockdown and getting back into the working space, if you've got this this habit of you know cooking all of your meals and only having home cooked cooked food, not only will you lose weight on it but also you'll be able to you'll have you'll have food that you can take to work with you so you could save yourself a ton of money by not not getting takeouts and also it means that you're at work you're going to have some you know much healthier food always on hand so you won't be tempted to go and get takeouts brilliant okay, okay. number two what's uh, number three and number three is the exercise one okay build it so a hundred days of a hundred days of squats hundred days of squats now a hundred days so you start on day one with one squat then you go to day two with two squats day three yeah. three squats day four four squats okay etc up to a hundred days. days wow now what i would invite people who are watching this um to do is choose one or all of these if it's entirely up to you what, what you do um i'm going to pick one i don't know which one it's going to be um, the squat one I reckon I could do. So I don't think that would challenge me too greatly because um, I do a lot of that. Kind right. of thing anyway. <laughs> but then I'm All just right. thinking, I'm just thinking where I'm at actually with squats. Uh, I, probably, I probably do around 50, but at the moment, so why don't I start at 50 and see if I can get to 150. How about that? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, if, if... Go on. <laughs> 
No, I was, I was saying, if, if, if you've never done a squat before, then start at the one. But um, for somebody who's as fit as you are, then yes, I would suggest starting at... Thanks for saying maybe, it, start, <laughs> maybe, maybe start at 50 and go up to 150. Brilliant. Okay. So three challenges for, uh, for everyone to, uh, to consider here. Thank My thanks to Sarah Taylor for her thoughts on intermittent fasting and bodybuilding. Are you up for taking one of the challenges that Sarah's left us with? If you are, please tell us in the comments below and also come back and tell us in a few weeks time how you're getting on. And also look out for my video about this challenge too. To get that video and all of our latest uploads, subscribe and hit the bell so that you get notified as and when we post. This channel is dedicated to learning more about your health and giving you more freedom in your health and your wellness. And if this channel can help your friends and family, please do also share it with them too. If you really wanna get proactive with your health, Total Wellness Club are developing health quests at questly.life. Join now while we're developing the site and you'll get access to health quests to help you immediately personalize your health by identifying 10 critical health categories that you need to focus on. You'll be able to track your progress and you'll be able to help us develop the platform more too. I'll put a link in the description below and I'll see you next week.